at it. Hello, everybody. This is Tiffany with the private room. And tonight we are back with the PR talks, relationships and sex. So we have been off for um, quite a few weeks um, and we have some new panelists that are joining us tonight. We have a really, really big excitement that is gonna take place about nine o'clock that you all are gonna wanna tune into because it involves you. And we want to make sure that you are here to find out what we have cooking for the end of July that we want to invite you to, that we personally want to invite you to. Um, and it's going to be real sexy and real steamy. And it's going to be about our favorite subject on the private room, um, sex, sex, and more sex and more sex. So we're going to get right into it. Sorry for the technical difficulties tonight. Um, Zoom decided that we all needed to update our Zoom account. So it took us a minute to get logged on and even more for me because I forgot my password, you know, being logged in all the time. And so uh, we're here, we are here. Um, we have our, a few of our old panelists, not in age, but in seasoning. We have our old panelists here. So we have uh, Mr. Fred Bryant with us tonight. Um, we have Barry with us tonight. And then we have the sexy Miss Ro P. Then we have our new panelist, Miss Tiffany. She's a, she's the, she has the same name as me, but I promise you that she's bigger and better than me. She's the, the lovely Miss Tiffany down there in Charleston, South Carolina. So um, you're going to enjoy getting to know her. Um, we have Miss Makisha with us tonight, the sexy, sexy Miss Makisha tonight. And then we also have Miss AJ, Les Party Johnson, and our guest host, Mr. Classic West Webster. So we have a full lineup tonight, y'all. And I am very, very, very excited about this lineup because we got some stuff cooking. And when I tell y'all that we are ready for a party the end of July, we are in ready for a party. So y'all go ahead and just, just sit back relax, enjoy the conversation, find out what we got going on, find out who's going to be in the building, and um, we're going to make it do what it do, y'all, okay? So we're going to start off by making sure that we introduce all of our panelists, and we're going to start off with our new panelists. We're going to start with them first, because I know y'all looking at the screen like, who are all these people? <laughs> so we're going to get started. I'm going to kind of go in order of who I can see on my screen. So we're going to talk to our twin or my twin, Miss Tiffany. So Miss Tiffany, how you doing, girlfriend? How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Good, good, good. When I get up, you know. Yes, yes. I see you looking beautiful and luscious over there. <laughs> thank, you, thank you. I try. Yes. I'm going to turn off my other camera because I'm looking real real crazy in two cameras there we go so y'all get to see my my former self and then my 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 thinner self right there so there we are there we is there we are right there so we got miss tiffany miss tiffany tell everybody where are you what's your current city um and just just tell us a little bit more why did you join us on um on relationships and sex talk well um to start i'm from charleston originally from connecticut um I decided to join you guys because I miss doing the podcasting thing. Um, I used to host a podcast called The Mix Fits, and then I had my own podcast called Sweet Tea with Tiffany, and we mostly talked about the same thing that we're going to talk about tonight, so I'm super excited to get into the conversation about sex and relationships and dynamics and commitments and all types of stuff, so um I'm really excited and happy to be here and thank you for the opportunity. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Well, you and I have already started collaborating on a few things. So y'all are going to see a lot from Miss Tiffany. Um, I plan on getting down there to Charleston, hopefully next month to come mm -hmm. and hang out with you and um, for us to get to know each other a little bit more, hug on each other, go out and dance <laughs> and have some shots together and all that good mm -hmm. stuff. So... <laughs> 
I'm looking forward to coming down to Charleston. Charleston is a beautiful, sexy city. And so I'm looking forward to coming down there and spending um, some time with you so that you and I can, can, can party in and have a good time, have a good time. You know what? We might be able to do a live while I'm there in Charleston. Yeah, in yeah, we could do that. Yeah, and I see Ro, I see Ro over there. She right there. Look like she's she about to roll up. Look at you, Ro. <laughs> <laughs> With this adult platform, ma'am, telling me to <laughs> shush. <laughs> Uh, so uh, Miss Ro, I don't know. I might have we might have to bring the crew down so we can just have a good time down there in Charleston and and live it up and, and talk when about this? And all this good stuff. When when is Charleston? What date is Charleston? So we're looking at <laughs> August 18th weekend. So probably going down that Friday, coming back Sunday night, something like that. We'll figure it out. Because I know Miss Tiffany, she won't mind hosting us. We can find us a little corner, corner in the wall somewhere to host the, the live relationships and sex talk. So we can talk about that and try to put a plan together and put it out there to see if y'all want to join us. Yeah, because I, I want, I'm like, what, if, what, if, what if I want to come to Charleston? <laughs> you can come. You can come. <laughs> oh, no. oh, he can't go. He can't come. You uh oh. He might try to, he might turn up in Charleston. You might not have us back down there, Tiffany. <laughs> <laughs> nice, 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 nice. Well, thank you. So we have to get into your business because everybody kind of puts out, you know, what their relationship dynamic is. So tell us, are you single right now? And what's your relationship dynamic? Um, I'm actually polyamorous. Um, I do have a life partner slash nesting partner. Um, kind of like taking a break from the dating scene right now because I'm kind of like on my healing journey. So I'm um, getting really into spiritual stuff and um, I want to be a better version of myself before I put myself out there for other partners. I like it. I like it. So you're, you're, you have a, a partner. Mm -hmm. You're polyamorous. So do you usually <laughs> date multiple men do you date with men and women like what is your what do you yeah, I, I identify as um bisexual and pansexual so I really don't have a preference as it's, it's just how people treat me right um I have we date separately at the moment we have dated together um but we find that it gets to be a little bit more trickier when you're dating all together because there's so many different personalities and one might be more chemistry like bound with the other one where eh, we're not meshing and right. so it's just easier to be separate for now um if somebody comes along and they find both of us are compatible to them cool we're down we're just easy go going with the flow type of people like we don't try to make things as you know, complicated as a lot of people think it could be. Okay, cool. I like it. I like it. All right. All right. So mostly everybody knows me. I don't feel like I have to introduce myself, but I will. So um, <laughs> I'm married. My husband and I have um, tried polyamory or tried um, dating together. Um, it has worked for us in the past. It hasn't worked for us in the past. You know, things happen. Um, so right now we're focused on one another, um, and just kind of working on being co-parents and raising our children and just making sure that our children have what they need and that we're just happy individuals right now. That's where we, are. so, um, married, open to polyamorous relationships, but currently just focused on our family and the children and just enjoying the summer, you know, doing what families do during the summer when the kids are out of school. So that's that where I am. Can I add something to that? Yes, ma'am. Family, and I totally bypassed this part, but our main goal, him and I, are to build a family dynamic. Um, so if his partners and I can be friends, AKA my metamors, mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm people know what that is, yeah. um, that we can build on our family dynamic. Because right. I don't know if you guys have ever talked about like group economics, mm -hmm. and we have. how it could be a benefit to everybody involved. 
Mm -hmm. But the main thing is building our tribe and having people who genuinely want to be a part of a family dynamic. Right. Right. So that's our, yes. that's our main goal at the end of the day, being polyamorous. Nice. I like that. I like it. I like it. Um, I think that, you know, my husband and I have tried dating together and it's really hard to find someone that you get along with, with your mate. And then that person, you, you're, you're both as your mate equally attracted to that person, but then that other person is equally attracted to the two of you. So mm -hmm. we've tried dating together. We've tried dating separately. Um, and, you know, it's just whatever works for us at, at the time we, we were open to both, you know, when mm -hmm. we were doing what we were doing. So um, I'm totally down. I, I feel people should live the way that makes them happy. And I was just talking to him the other night, like we make our own rules. This is, this is our relationship. We don't have to answer to anybody. And every couple should make their own rules for their relationship. No one should tell you how to love. No one should tell you how to date. No one should tell you how to raise your family. That's something that's between you and your partner. And I mean, even if it's a situationship, whatever your relationship is with whomever it is you choose to have a relationship, have sex with, whatever, that's, that's between y'all. No one can, can judge and no one has the right to tell you how to be happy and healthy with, mm -hmm. with whoever it is you choose to be with. So mm -hmm. um, that being said, because I know we have another polyamorous um, panelist, um, we're going to go over to him, Barry. So Barry, please introduce yourself because I know that you have your nesting partner with you beside you. Um, and um, so go ahead and reintroduce yourself um, to everyone before we move on to our, our other two new panelists. Okay. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Barry. I'm 53 years old. I live in Greensboro, North Carolina. Uh, 70 said I, I am polyamorous. Um, a lot of y'all have met Vanessa. She is my nesting partner. <laughs> I also have a, another nesting partner now. Uh, she, has, she has moved in with us and she is my submissive. Okay. This is new. <laughs> this is new, Barry. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Go ahead. <laughs> Very recent. But, um, and, I, along the same lines of, um, we've always been open to dating separate or together. We don't, we try not to do a lot of rules. Um, as long as you're happy and safe, then, you know, enjoy life. And if something like in this situation, everybody clicked. So, you know, we're doing life together. I love it. I love it. I remember when we had Barry on the first, his first episode with us, we had so many comments asking all these questions about Barry and what Barry's dynamics were and how is it that all the women get, a, get along and all that kind of stuff. And we, we had a really, really good episode with Barry on his first one. And so I like the fact that we have you on, Tiffany, because you're the other side. You're a female who is polyamorous um, and you have a nesting partner. Um, mm -hmm. And so I, I like that we're, we're going to, we, we got a full panel now with, you know, with the two of you on being polyamorous, you know, having mon uh, monogamous uh, relationships on here, people that are open to, you know, the swinging lifestyle. Um, you know, we have AJ who is um, a lesbian. So we've got everybody on here now, male, female, heterosexual, bisexual, whatever sexual. <laughs> and um, just having a good time, just having a good time. Miss Makisha, introduce yourself, love. Okay, where do I start? Can you guys hear me? <laughs> sure. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, so I'm Akeisha Potts. I am a certified life coach for 12 years. By day, I guess full time, I'm a commercial uh, property and project manager, mom of three, divorced twice. <laughs> um, I like to throw that out there, engaged like 18,000 times. So <laughs> I am. Uh, my status, God, my dating status. I don't know today. It, it's, I've been, I've been in this on again, off again relationship today. I'm off, um, for four years with, with the same person, a monogamous kind of sort of thing. Okay. Um, 
we go, we go, I'm so I live in Charlotte. I live in Charlotte. I reside in Charlotte. I go back and forth between Fort Lauderdale and Charlotte. Um, I'm originally from Brooklyn, New York, born and raised. And um, I am a very mature, honest monogamous who believes in what you decide to do, you need to tell me. Mm -hmm. And if you decide to do something that would be life altering, I better not find out. Right. You better be very respectful. You better make it make sense. And you better know that if it is to the detriment of what we have going on, that it wouldn't ruin what we have. So you better hold on tight. So am I open? Yes. Um, is infidelity real? Of course it is. It's, it's almost impossible that it won't happen. It's almost impossible, especially man versus woman. Can a man be monogamous? Typically, no. Um, the chances are extremely slim. Do they probably want to? Maybe. Are they disciplined enough? Probably not. Um, temptation is, is light. It's easy. And I'm, I'm willing to, to, to talk about passes. I'm willing to talk about the extremity of temptation and what it looks like. I understand that. Um, we are raised as women, right? To believe in a white picket fence, a house, a dog, kids, family, travel. Yay, we've risen the American dream and all that hoopla but that's not the way life is. Um, have, have I been bi? Of course, in my twenties, have I ex experienced women? Absolutely fucking adore them. Um, if one plops in my face, it's on, but um, is that my thing? No, I am typically a heterosexual woman. Have I experienced other things? Of course, if my man wanted to do it today at 46, turning 47 soon, probably not. Um, I just know how that opens up Pandora's box. Would I experience it on a vacation on an island far away and I never have to see her again? That's who I am. I'm down. And I want to pick her and she got to be my type. Okay. And yeah, you should pick her. We'll right. talk about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, so I'm that girl. I'm okay. So, um, yeah, I am single. When we speak about status, I am not married. I do not have a ring. I do date. I date, I am, I, I date <laughs> and I enjoy dating and I date beautiful, absolutely handsome, gorgeous, tall, sexy, well off men and I enjoy it. Mm -hmm. um, so if that explains status, there you have it. Yes, yes. Okay, so we, before we move on, cause you said a, a couple things, you said a couple things that you are overall monogamous, but you're open to A, B, and C. Yep. But you also hinted that monogamous, I mean, infidelity is a thing and that, you know, for most monogamy and being monogamous is not something that can stand the test of time. Did I understand that correct? Did I get that? Usually monogamy does not stand the test of time. Two people really have to agree to that and be honest when we respectfully say, this is what we're doing. This is the mm -hmm. committed relationship. We're walking down this road. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mature monogamy. It doesn't mean that we won't fall off. It doesn't mean that it isn't without error. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And monogamy doesn't mean forever. It doesn't mean we waver. We, we, we will bend a little. So we have to give grace. Um, gotcha. So I, I am like honest it. and sincere. Am I poly? No, because I, I know me and I mm -hmm. understand economic standing with it, the benefits. I have friends that have been married for 25 years that have introduced women in their households, their lives, raising children and family. I have had an amazing co-parenting relationship with my ex-husbands and we've raised beautiful kids. I have kids from 17 to 27. So I'm, I'm straight with that. I'm good. So I understand monogamy. I understand traditional. I understand the provider. I understand the Bible. I understand the word. I understand all of that. And I understand what works. And I also understand it's all a, a crock of shit. <laughs> so you, you've got to understand what works for you. What works for me is that I want to go in and live my life with my life partner. 
And I understand right. that shit happens and I'm not going to let it ruin my life. But I need you to be honest about what the fuck you're doing. Right. Yes. Yes. I, yes. I do not like multiple partners because I don't. When I'm single, though, and I'm not dealing with someone who I'm in a committed relationship with, mm -hmm. I'm single. Right. I'm absolutely single. And right. I'm absolutely having a great time. But when I'm in a monogamous relationship that is committed and we are true and we are sincere about what we're doing, that mm -hmm. is what it is but it doesn't mean there aren't incidents or things that could potentially occur. I would hope that we could be honest and, and discuss it and have dialogue, but yes. it doesn't always happen that way. Yes, I like it. I like it. I, I'm a firm believer that tell me the truth and give me the option whether I want to deal with it or not. That's right. Usually I'm going to deal with it if you're worth it. Right. If you're worth it, you know, let's talk yeah. about it. Maybe I like her too. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. I like it. I like it. Um, how do you feel about that, uh, Tiffany and Barry? Is when it comes to y'all being poly, did you go into poly relationships because you kind of have the same feeling about monogamy not being a forever thing and so forth? What made you decide to go that route? Um, I accidentally fell into it. <laughs> okay. I accidentally fell into it. Um it happened, it wasn't with my my nesting partner now this was like 20 years ago so I didn't even know polyamory existed <laughs> um right. what had happened was um <laughs> my kid's father mm -hmm. was still dealing with his um first child's mom in the Dominican Republic and I didn't know about it so when she uh -huh. came to the states I had just had my son our son mm -hmm. so she was here by herself she didn't know about me I didn't know about her so it was a cheating thing infidelity that but my thing was was I had a heart enough to say this girl doesn't have family here just go be with her I'll be fine I have mm -hmm. my you know I have my family here and she was like no I don't want to leave either one of you alone and I said okay so how is this going to work I was open to making it work because I'd rather have a solution than a problem follow me around mm -hmm. so and her daughter being my son's sister I felt like well why can't we all just be a family then and we raise our kids together in a healthy environment where both parents the mom and dad of both children are in the picture and it's not a single family or a single parent household where right. people have to struggle and everything like that so she came and she lived with us and I was trying to figure out how we could, I could sponsor her so she could stay here past her visa and we could get her daughter here. Mm -hmm. um, but then, you know, he had, I guess, another tickle in his pants and decided <laughs> to cheat again. Um, so me and her, we both said, look, you're not ready for this. So she right. went with his sister. I went and moved back home with my parents. I let him have the girl that, you know, was lesbian. Mm. Um, she ended up getting pregnant soon after I got pregnant again with my daughter. <laughs> it's a mess. There's a lot going on. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, yeah, he's somewhere on like child number 10, I guess. I don't know. I don't keep up with him, but that was okay. my first introductory to polyamory or the idea of it. So, um, me and my partner now, we didn't start off polyamorous. We started off as a monogamous couple. Um, the conversations were had because he had a previous experience with polyamory also that he didn't know that's what it was. So mm -hmm. as we were talking about it, we we're like, well, wait a minute. If we both have it in us to be open and free and, you know, not biased against each other's, you know, ideas or whatever, then why can't it work? Right. So I'm very adaptable. So, and, but I'm also submissive in a way. Um, so I kind of let him lead the way. Hmm. That's how we, we got to where we're at, so. Nice. What about you, Barry? What made you become polyamorous? Um, I would say that I, I researched polyamory and open marriages for probably 10 years before becoming polyamorous <laughs> and for me um there was the realization that you know I had been cheated on a lot of times 
I, the realization that people have desires and, and stuff that in normal monogamous relationships, they're not allowed to even talk about. Mm -hmm. And I found for myself that open and honest worked so much better for me. And, you know, I, I'd rather see my partners happy than either have them living a lie or hiding the truth or mm -hmm. whatever. So, um, when I became single about a year and a half ago, I, I approached life as, okay, I'm polyamorous now. I'm not, I'm not going to be in a monogamous relationship. And Vanessa was my first partner and, and she was, um, she had come from better stretch for her, except for kind of learning to be okay with the feeling side of, of that. Mm -hmm. um, which I'm, I'm all about. It's not just about sex for me. I, I have relationships with the people I'm with. And I just um, found that I'd, I would much rather be able to be open and honest with people and have them feel like they can do the same to me and we can, you know, want happiness for one another and, you know, get it, you know, I've, I've gotten excited for partners when they met somebody new. Nice. So, I love that. I love that. I, I like that you felt that honesty was more important um, than, you know, than lies and cheating and untruths that you, 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 you prefer to have the open, honest transparency of the relationship where everybody is happy versus the lies and the, and the other fuckery that comes with relationships. <laughs> when people are not honest about what they want and what they need and so forth. So yes, um, someone said something about a link is not working. What link is not working? The, the, the Facebook link. Uh, there, are you saying that they can't see the- They can't log in. Link? Yeah, they can't. Yeah, exactly. They're trying to log in with the link that you gave me and they're not able to get in. Yeah, and Dusty said he don't see it on your page either. Like he was, he trying to find it on your stuff, and he said he's not seeing it. Huh. Okay. Um, I will look at that. Yeah, I'll look at that in one second. Um, so we have a uh, classic Webster on, and him and I were talking about, um, you know, this subject of relationships um coming together and doing something together and so i invited him to be on with us because i thought this would be a good chance for him to to learn about you know the the pr the relationships and sex talk panel um what we do on here what we talk about but then also to try to get his feet wet to see if maybe we gonna keep this up together so <laughs> classic uh introduce yourself while i'm trying to figure out why people can't see our facebook page how you doing, panel? My name is Classic Webster. I'm a stand-up comedian. I'm originally from Washington, D.C., Maryland, and uh, I've traveled um, up and down the East Coast. I'm currently living in Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, I've been doing stand-up for about six years now. Um, I've been in the comedy field for over 15 years. I've written stuff for other for other comedians, and um, uh, I actually just, I, I have a um, a podcast show that I'm working on now, but we, we do more live uh, events. It's like a panel kind of like this, but we talk about relationships, um, communication with um, between men and women and marriages and just a whole, a, a whole bunch of stuff because there's a, there's a lack of information that has been given to us. Um, and, you know, we're, I'm trying to get, I have a co-host. Um, I'm actually doing a show in Maryland on the 22nd. And I'm going back home. And basically what we're what we'll be talking about is just like there's there's a line. I, I say the 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 communication barrier between men and women is there's a there's the dichotomy of of selflessness and selfless, selflessness and selfless, there's a thin line between the both of them. So and I feel like um, a lot of times us as men and women, we don't take the time out to understand one another, um, um, more so with, with men because men are naturally selfish. So, uh, there, there's, there's all, there's a lot of stumbling blocks with the communication and, um, this, this, how you grow up, the things that you, you, um, the things that you pick up 
um, along the way, whether it be from, you know, you seeing your parents with their failed communication with your mother and father, or you may have a homeboy or a homegirl or even personal experiences. So um, I feel like collectively um, I'm gathering this information and me and my co. So we, we, um, but I got to go home to do this stuff. So when I met Tiffany, it, it seemed like she was already into what I was getting, what I was doing. So I just felt like it was, it was, it was necessary for me to get touch base with her and try to, um, you know, just to just put my vision out there. But I, I also do it from, with me being a stand up comedian, I do it from a comedic standpoint, but there's also a lot of uh, validity into the realness of what, what, what my commentary is about. Nice. Well, I am glad to have you tonight. Um, and we, we need to know your business. So are you single? You married? <laughs> How do you feel about all this monogamy, polyamory, all this kind of stuff that we're talking about right now? Tell, it's, tell us. It's, it, it's crazy. <laughs> Before I get into that, I also want to give a shout out to AJ. She was talking about she's a life coach. I'm actually in the process of uh, making a transition. I'm still going to do stand up, but I want to be a life coach and do motivational speaking. So I will incorporate my comedy and the life coping skills and the life coaching skills and to do motivational speaking for couples and stuff like that. So I would love to pick your brain and get some information from you uh, at another time. But um, my my status is um, I'm single at the moment. Um, I'm I'm contemplating on getting into the polygamy uh, um, marriage. Um, I'm, I actually have two, two um, women that I'm speaking to now more so. Um, it, it's, it's more so far as like my religious beliefs. I, I don't really like to talk about really get too deep into religion, but I am Muslim. So, um, you know, I, I've, I've really started thinking about it the past year. I've been divorced for over a year. And um, I believe that um, a lot of it, like I said, because I feel like men are naturally selfish. So a monogamy can work. It all depends on, I'll even go back to what my grandmother used to tell them, tell me, uh, my grandparents were married for 51 years and then they both passed on. So it's like, she used to always tell me, you, it's, it, it all depends on how you're evenly yoked with a person and your comfort level. And if you can, the, the being honest is, is very necessary. Um, it's, it's, it's very imperative. And, and if you, I feel as though that if you, if you're with your significant other and you guys can't be completely honest with each other, then the chances of you guys being loyal in your sexual chemistry or uh, sexual, you know, connection that you guys have, it's more likely someone's going to step out. Um, because being honest can be, it, it, it can be brutal, but it's it it being honest is 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 very therapeutic because it gives you um it's it's it releases a huge weight off your back and your chest to, to find that person that you evenly yoke with you could be honest and there's no shame or there's no insecurity that's it's in these days of age it's 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 almost impossible to find that type of chemistry with someone but it's it's it, you, it can happen. I believe it can. I, I'm a hopeless romantic, so I still believe in, you know, certain things. But, um, you know, it's each his own. It, it's all about your comfort level and, and what you're willing to do, what you're willing to sacrifice, what you're willing to the hard work you're going to put into it. And it's about being fair. Um, you know, everything can't be one person's way. It's you guys got to both come together and decide what you're comfortable with and what you're willing to live with. Mm -hmm. and strive to and strive forward too, you know mm -hmm. so that's my take on it okay i totally get that so you said that you're seeing two women right now do yes. they know about each other yes okay and yes. so are they open to having a um a dynamic of being in a polyamorous relationship yes well it's there it's they're not it's going to be I, I, it's going to be in different homes. It's not like, you know, Barry has the, he has the luxury of having um, both of his, his, his partners in under one roof. And um, you know, that, that could work, but it, it just all depends on the person's comfort level. But in, in my, in my situation, I think it's going to be, it's it's going to end up being in different, different, under different roofs. Okay. And I, and I think, I believe, I believe that 
that could work. I think that may work best. Okay. So have you ever been in a polyamorous um, relationship no. before? And have they? No. no. Okay. Okay. The first, the, 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 one of the ladies, one of the ladies has been in, in a, um, in a poly marriage before. Okay. And it worked. It, 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 it worked for a while for her, but the jealousy, the, um, you know, a person can feel when you're giving more attention and, it, and it's, and it's give and take. I feel like, you know, in, in some, it's, it's hard to make everything even all of the time. You're going to have some situations where, uh, one person may require more attention than the other one. So you, you, you know, and when you, and if you're, and if you're the other person, then you, you have to understand and know that and be okay with that attention being shifted for a, however long it takes, you know, people go through things, life, right. life throws you, gives you cars that you, that you have to, that you have to play. So okay. it's like, you know, it, it, it all depends. It's about the understanding as well, too. You know, nice. at, the, at the end of the day, if, if it's a family and we consider ourselves a team and it's about everyone's happiness, then, you know, sometimes it takes, it will take more understanding than wanting what you want. And eventually that understanding um, when the two people know of each other, know about each other and they, they're comfortable with each other, then, you know, they'll, they're, it won't be so much as pulling teeth. It'll be the understanding is there and they're more willing to allow that attention to shift. Right. Right. I, I really, I agree with that. I rock with that. So the, the two young ladies have, have they met? Do they get along? No, they haven't met yet. They, they haven't okay. met yet. We're, we're, we're trying to put, I'm trying to put that together soon okay. okay all right maybe but they do, know, but, they do but they do know <laughs> but they do know of each other so you know this is the first time this is the first time it's this is actually is crazy because this is my first experience with with um with poly was it polygamy right so it's like you know I've, I've done some research i've known um acquaintance of mine who've been in this situation and they've given me pointers and advice and um, you know, at this point I'm 41 years old. So, um, I've, I've, I've been married twice and, um, my first marriage, I got married at the age of 22. So, um, you know, I, I got a lot of my, I guess the way my grandparents gave me the upbringing. So I got a lot of, um, insight from them and they were role models for me, you know, me even wanting marriage. Um, it was something that I grew up seeing. My my parents didn't, you know, of course, they I didn't get to get that example from them because by the time I was six, seven years old, they had divorced already. So, you know, um, I, I got a chance to grow up, um, you know, living in a household with my grandparents and, and seeing them uh, coexist with each other and the love and, you know, the ups and the downs. But they were there, you know, and, and of course, you know, a lot of people say the error is different. You know, the times were, you know, when my grandparents were together, marriages lasted longer, you know, um, versus now these years that we live in a lot of marriages, they, they fail, they fall within the first five years. So it's like, yeah. people are more, people are more privy to when things are not, are not working in their best interest. They, they want to separate and cut ties where yeah. versus back then people, they weathered the storm. They, you know, they prayed together. They, 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 you know, they, they just, they just stuck together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. yeah yeah it's a different time people yeah. people want to put in the work right. right it's a lot of work it's a lot of work it, it is, it is. It is. It's, a, it's a lot of work in a monogamous relationship so absolutely it's absolutely more work in a absolutely. polyamorous relationship where you right. have multiple partners that you have to be considerate of everybody's feelings and mm -hmm. you know and then like you said jealousy Mm -hmm. um, I saw Rose shaking her, shaking her head. She had the the attitude with her roll head, head roll she had going on. I <laughs> so, think more so, more so. I think more so. I think the the main problem is is that <laughs> I feel like there's not enough men, and I don't want to generalize all men because you know it, it it all depends on what you grow up being taught and what you understand. I just feel like most men aren't emotionally available to give what they're afraid to give or what they don't understand. You know, more, more women are more emotional where men more so they 
they go off of what they see, what they can feel, what, you know, what's in front of them, you know? Mm-hmm. So um, they don't, <laughs> it's, it's more nerve wracking or they're uncomfortable to tap into their vulnerability to understand the plight of how, what their woman feels, you know, what their significant other may feel. So. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm glad that you are able to share that. And um, I'm going to say best wishes. If you have two young ladies that you obviously are digging like that and Mm. they're willing to meet each other and to try it out, go for it. As long as you have that communication and that transparency, like we've been talking about and just being honest about what your needs are and let them be honest about what their needs are, then I hope it works out. I hope it works out for y'all because it, it can, it can be a beautiful thing to be able to have multiple relationships where everybody's open, honest, and respectful. Right. It can be really beautiful, but it can get really nasty too when right. people are not respectful of one another and there's, and there's not, it's not communication and everybody is not on the same page. It can get really right. nasty very quickly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Ro, you were shaking your head pretty, pretty hard there when he was talking about, you know, the time and having to divvy up your time. So what's the, what, what was that about, ma'am? What was that about? <laughs> so y'all know me. Um, those who on the panel before know how I like feel about this. It's, it's like, I understand and get it when he was saying, like, you got to understand that the other person may need more attention or whatever. But as the person who has the feelings that are involved in the situation and you start to notice changes in your mate and how they're acting towards someone else, at some point, it's like it becomes disrespectful. And I'm not telling you how to feel because you can't help how you feel. But at the same time, it's like, if you start to give them more attention than you were giving me all of a sudden, it's a problem. You know what I'm saying? It's like, then mm-hmm. what about my feelings and how, you know what I'm saying? Like, where do I stand in this situation? Mm-hmm. And it's like, nobody ever is like, well, you knew what you was getting into, you know, and whatever, but it's not like that. Like, as you grow as a person, people want you to nowadays want you to move like almost like a robot. They want you to like be in situations and don't put no type of feelings in it know nothing because you knew this expectation was this and this and that and the other. But you're if you're a human, mm-hmm. over time, you're going to develop feelings. You're going to, you know, your feelings are going to change just like their feelings may have changed about you. So it's, you know, it, it, it's inevitable. And people <laughs> want to basically just skip over that and just keep moving. You know what I'm saying? Even if you have a conversation, I feel like in the beginning, you should set boundaries. And whatever those boundaries are between you and that person, that's what you're supposed to keep. And at any point in that situation, you feel like you can no longer uphold those boundaries. It needs to come back and be a conversation. But once again, once the conversation is held, they want you to just erase your feelings and just be like, oh, now you tripping or you're being selfish or, you know, want to put the blame back on you. So to me, it's a lack of maturity. It's a lack of understanding. It's a lack of compassion. It's just like, and I know no disrespect to the people who are in these types of relationships, but it's like, I've noticed that this generation, they're doing it for the wrong reasons. Everybody just trying Absolutely. to do it. Just the fuck. You get what I'm saying? And mm-hmm. then when you bring it to the table to them, that is not just about fucking, it's about other things and other aspects. Like just because you're in a poly relationship doesn't mean that you're having sex with everybody that's mm-hmm. in the relationship. Somebody may just bring the finances in, you know, somebody may know how to cook better. Somebody may know how to attend the children. You know, they don't never think about those type aspects. It's right. always always sexually compatible. Mm-hmm. Um, you're gonna deal with you know what i'm saying i don't need mm-hmm. catching feelings because you know what i'm saying you knew what it was before we even got into this like that mm-hmm. shit is out the door so it makes people run away from it like somebody like me okay so i'm since we on me <laughs> i i just recently got divorced in august and um during this time like i've been dating i've even tried to experiment with women okay and I know now that I can be in an open relationship, like, cause I don't want to be in a traditional relationship anymore. I know this about myself. 
I know that I want somebody who is open and honest with me about everything. I don't give a fuck if it's you want to go fuck the next bitch. Okay, you know, I don't want to know about it. Just go do it. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm one of them people. I don't I don't need to know no details like, oh, I'm going to see Susie. No, I don't need to know. Just go do you. Come back home. Do what you're supposed to do at home. Mm -hmm. So I don't have a man or a woman. I am single, single. <laughs> I am open to a lot of stuff and trying different stuff until I find what it is that I like and what I want. Nice. I like it. I like it. And everybody... can I, can I, mm -hmm. I was going to say, I, I was going to say, I, I totally agree with what Ro was saying. I think a lot of people get into the poly for, for the wrong reasons. The most is the, m men who get into it, most men get into it because of the sexual aspect. What what man doesn't want to be sexually involved with you know more than one woman? So it's like it. They feel like you know if if I label this and I tell you what it is, then <clears throat> then you should have no problem with it. And and I and and my take on it, um, me getting into wanting to getting into into the uh, into the poly is that. It, it what is not for the sexual, you know. Um, sometimes we 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 fall. That's why it's it's very important to know a person before you get sexually involved with it. Because a lot of times, us as people, we make the mistake. Um, because the first time in meeting someone, what 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 get what what's the introduction in meeting someone? You you it's there's a physical attraction, and then once you get in that that physical attraction. You have this honeymoon phase where you're having all this fun, but you're not having real life communications on what your expectations are. Where do you see yourself um, a year from now? Where what are we? What's the plan for us? Where where do you want to go? And then you start sleeping with this person, and then four or five months later, you might not even like this person no more, but you have the sexual connection to them. So you're just sleeping with each other and not really having no real um, positive exchange. You know what I'm saying? Because ha being sexual comes with a lot of responsibility. You know, people just think it is for pleasure, but it's 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 so much more responsibility to having a sexual exchange with someone that we we don't we just take it for granted or we don't we don't really think things through. You know, we 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 attach our spirits and our bodies to these to these other bodies who really don't have the same mind frame that we have or don't don't even know how to process move where we go at from here you know they're just living for the moment you know right. so I, I totally agree with what Ro was saying as far as this having a communication and understanding you know i really quick before you know one one of the um things that i that was was i had to if i'm going to do this i have to be going into this poly thing with people who have already been in the situation and though one of them has been in it the other one she she feels like She's doing the research as well. And, and if she's not willing to go into it, it's not something that I'm trying to force. It, all parties have to agree with this is what what you want to do or you're OK with the arrangement of, in, in this in this situation from us three. So, yeah. you know, communication is very important. Well, I definitely would say and I'm sure Barry, Tiffany and um, Makisha will also agree that you, you definitely have to do your research. But I think it's really, really clear to express that polyamory is not about sex. Oh polyamory <laughs> is about relationships, building right. relationships and connections. I when you're talking, when you're talking about going into polyamory, it's not about sex. Right. Yes. It's not about sex. If you want to just go around just sleeping with random people or having sex with multiple people, that's a swinging lifestyle mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. not a polyamory lifestyle. So most seasoned men, most seasoned men don't get into it for sex though. If you think it, about it, if you look at why oh, men oh, why no, men cheat. Oh no, they do. Uh, yeah. Most, they, they do. most, they do. most, <laughs> most men that most men that I most men that I talk to, because like I said, I, you know, I, I we do I, I talk to a lot of men and a lot of women and wonder why men go and step out on their marriage or in their relationships. And most men that, that if they're being real, they say that it's, it was it had nothing to do with sex. It was just about the she doesn't she she doesn't know how to talk. She doesn't know you know she, it's just like the chemistry is just off, and it has nothing to do with sexual. It's just that she don't know how to talk to me. She don't know how to you know yep. um 
be into the things that I like, you know, maybe sports or, you know, it, it, it just, it just sex was like the last. Now I'm not saying that there's not a great good percentage of men who get into it for that, but the most of the men that I talk to this is, it, ha- it really has nothing to do with sex why they cheated. I, yeah. I would, I would like to add to that. There's so many different ways to do polyamory. It so, is. Yeah, that was the next thing I was going to say. <laughs> have hierarchical relationships where they have their main partner and then like everybody else is kind of considered below that which i do not practice that and um, don't believe in it but i'm just saying there's different ways um there's kitchen table poly to where everybody meets and they can get along you have meetings and you can talk yeah there's parallel poly which is typically what i've practiced until just recently when i had a relationship that just happen to work out in a different way. Um, but having said that, I was going to say to anybody that's like dipping their toes into it, um, people don't have to meet. I mean, you can have your completely separate dates with this person, have your time with them, and they don't have to meet the other partners. You don't have to, you know, they, you don't have to talk about it, stick it in their face. I mean, you got to be open and honest. Right. But you, you don't need to, to break down all, like, you know, intimate details and, you know, it's the, this is my schedule. I got a, I got a date tomorrow night. How much do you want to know? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I just wanted to make sure that we impressed upon that, that polyamory is, is totally and not about sex. It's, it's most likely for most people <laughs> who know about it, understand it, living it, they understand that it's about connections and relationships and building and you can do it together with your partner. You can do it separately, but it's about mutual respect and communication. When it comes to, you know, if you're in a couple and y'all choose to sleep with other people without those relationships and connections, then most likely that is a swinging lifestyle that you're into. And all of these lifestyles are okay. If this is the way you want to live your life, then that's the way you want to live your life. And it's okay. But I just, feel and we do this and I feel that we do this every episode is that we have to make sure that people understand that because we had a lot of questions when Barry was telling us about you know polyamory when he first came on they were like well you know he just wants to sleep around with a bunch of women or you know this is just an excuse for people to cheat and that's not what polyamory is it's not an excuse to cheat because most likely everybody in the relationships knows what's going on because that's what it's built on is communication and trust and so, and there are so many different dynamics of dating together, dating separately, like Tiffany said, no, they, your partners don't have to get along and they don't have to like each other. It helps, but they don't have to, <laughs> they don't have to be sleeping together. You know, there's just so many different ways to see polyamory. Um, so what I do want to do, because I looks like Fred, we've lost him. Oh, he's trying to get back in. Um, we have one more panelist on here, Miss AJ. Um, and AJ is, um, and I'm gonna let her introduce herself, but when I said in our group chat, when I said we've got we've got a perfect panel now, is because we have heterosexual, we have bisexual, we have lesbian, we have poly, we have uh, monogamy, monogamous, you know, so we have the whole we have everything on this panel. And that's why I'm just so excited that we finally have like the whole picture. We have everybody represented here. So we have Miss AJ, Miss Liz Hardy Johnson, who, who hosts the Plyus, what I say, the Plyus LGBT parties in the Queen City and surrounding cities. If you have not been to a Les party party, you have not been to a Les party party. Anywhere. I don't care who says that they have LGBT parties. If it's not an AJ Les party party, then you have not been to a uh, a phenomenal, hot, sexy, cool vibes, LGBT scene, party scene. You have not until you've been to this woman's event. So um, AJ, thank you for joining us. Please introduce yourself to everybody. (laughs) Thank you for that amazing introduction. Wow. Um, so yeah, my name is AJ and apparently I throw cool parties. <laughs> and I'm um I'm honored to be thank you. I'm honored to be on the panel. Um I was very uh nervous about doing this. It's my first time doing like a podcast type of situation. So didn't really know what to expect. 
but I definitely loved coming in and you know hearing your different thoughts and perspectives and um it definitely made me comfortable um and definitely honored to to be involved in something like this so thank you for having me um and what would you like for me to Say. We we got it. We got to get the dibs. Are you single? Yeah. Are you partnered? You dating? Are you poly? You know, with tell tell us tell us tell us about AJ. We we want to know your personal life. We we at your house right now. We on the couch. <laughs> <laughs> we we are definitely on the couch right now, actually. <laughs> but um, huh, that's interesting. I was just actually talking to someone about this today, right? About how like we all feel the need to put ourselves in boxes and put other people in boxes and categories, right? And, you know, I, we do it sometimes to make other people feel comfortable and maybe to feel, uh, make us feel more comfortable. Um, but honestly, I'm me, you know, if, if you want me to kind of like um, drill it down a little bit more, I'm a lesbian, right? Um, <laughs> I consider myself to be just an open person. Like I'm only, a, I, I love women, right? Because they're attractive to me and I like having sex with them. Um, <laughs> if I, <laughs> but with, with but with full clarity, if I met a man who made me feel the same way, I would explore that, right? I just have not explored that type of sexual connection with a man, so I have not pursued it. So mm -hmm. um, that's kind of where I'm at with it. Um, I am single right now, just kind of focusing on, you know, let's party my passions. I had to do some uh, exploration and self-awareness, and uh, I was celibate for about a year um, and a month, just kind of like understanding you know, how my past is showing up in my present and kind of working through some things that I needed to work through um, and understanding to your point. I don't, I forget your name, the guy with the blue hat. What's your name? Classic. Classic. You made an amazing point when you said, you know, we kind of downplay uh, the power, you know, uh, that we give in a sexual exchange, right? And, mm -hmm. and the impact that is, you know, you're actually sharing something, you're giving your soul a piece of yourself, you're fracturing yourself, right? When you when you have sex with someone and, and people take that for granted, they do it very lightly. So I had to kind of like internalize that, you know, and take some accountability for my part in that. So mm -hmm. with that being said, um, you know, I'm just focusing on me and, um, you know, trying to, you know, be a better version of myself every day and try to be more intentional um, about how, you know, I treat myself and treat others and protecting my energy. So we got some, we got something in common because I've been celibate for a year myself. So uh, it's it, it's been challenging I mean, yeah. for a man for this is the first time that I've gone through something like this but I, I got out of, you know I just recently went through a divorce so you know before I decided I wanted to get back into really dating and being available um you know in the dating scene I, I had to get right with myself and and process and get rid of the baggage that I was holding on to because I felt myself I still had a lot of things that I didn't let go and and it wouldn't have been it would I would have been no good to no one else until I resolved those issues. So, big facts. But let me be yeah. clear: I was celibate. <laughs> I am no longer celibate. <laughs> so, <there's that. laughs> yeah, I'm, oh, no, I'm, just I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> what was that? What was that, Tiffany? I, I, I was being. I was being. I was being. I was being messy. I was like, okay, who was the lucky girl? Tell us about her. You ain't got to tell oh. us her name. What, what, made, what made her break your celibacy was, you know, like, was she hot? Was she just like, she just, just did it for you? You know, what, what took you out of celibacy? What made you decide, you know, it's time to, it's time to just jump out there. Like, Are we doing this? Is, this is what we're doing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this, this is what, this is where we're doing it. <laughs> wow. That's a great question. Um, <laughs> I would say, I mean, the only way to really describe it is um, energy. You know, like one thing, you know, I've learned in all these years that I've been here um, is that, you know, one thing you have to realize is the power of energy, right? Everything is energy, mm -hmm. right? And you have to mm -hmm. be able to be in tune with your energy and the energy that you feel around others within yourself and outside of yourself, right? So, um, I've been very, very uh, aware of that, right? And I'm leaning more into that than I have ever done in the past. So um, if I can tell you a reason why I did it, it's because of the energy. It just was there. Um, it was a connection and I just went with it. Nice, nice. Well, I mentioned, oh, I've been celibate for eight, for eight months now. Okay. <laughs> and that's been intentional because, you know, I was separated from my husband and I felt like I didn't want to give my energy to someone else 
you know, being separated. I just, that was just not something that I wanted to do. And plus I knew that at, I was at a very vulnerable place in my, in my life. And I also knew that um, sex is not just sex for me anymore. It is very personal and very intimate and very, and it's emotional for me. I have, my feelings have to be connected to you at this point in my life at 46 years old for me to lay down with you. So I wasn't going to be like, oh, I'm free now. You know, I, you know, I'm not, I mean, connected by legally, but you know, now I can go out here and live my best life. I was living my best life. I was doing it with my girl, bro. We out, we, we meeting people, partying, having a good time, coming to Liz parties and all that good stuff. Mm. But it wasn't about me exchanging bodily fluids and, and, you know, getting into bed with somebody. It was really about me trying to find myself and love myself again. And I needed that for me. So um, big, big shout out to you for, for doing that for you and realizing what you needed. Because for me, this has been, it, this is helping me with my healing and just being, getting back connected to myself. And probably the same thing for you too, Classic. Like, you know, you just went through a divorce. So you're going through a transition in life and it sounds like you were doing the same thing as well, AJ. So um, yeah. big shout out to people who realize that they need that disconnect from certain activities to be able to get centered and to come back to yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I don't want to skip Fred. Fred's been very patient. Usually he chimes in on stuff, but he's, he's chilling tonight. So Fred, Fred, buddy, What's up, Fred? you don't want to talk to us tonight, Fred. You don't, you no, don't I just, I just been enjoying, <laughs> no, I just been enjoying the conversation and, you know, everyone has, um, made some very great points and the discussion has been, um, very good. So rather than to just, you know, chime in or whatever, I've just been just been listening and paying All attention right. and I found a lot of commonalities. Um yeah. and um so I'll just introduce myself and then we go from there. So I am Fred. Um 49, be 50 in November. Um divorced. I was married for 16 and a half years. I'm originally from North Carolina, but I lived in Maryland uh, for 20 years, and I recently back in North Carolina um, now for about three years now, something like that. Right after the pandemic um, happened, I kind of moved back. Um, about to move to uh, Florida, um, hopefully in September, um, for another job. What part of Maryland um, were you living in? Uh, PG, right? Okay, right, okay. Um, near Six Flags, yeah. Okay, all right. Um, um, very, uh, single, single, um, uh, Dom D type don't have anyone under protection right now. Um, um, been in that for about 10 years. Um, off and and on been in what? I think I missed that, Fred. You've been in what? Me? Uh, I've been a Dom. Gotcha. Gotcha. A yeah. dom. Dom. Got it. Got it. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I didn't yeah. hear that part. I'm sorry. Uh, specifically d -type. Um, I don't really do with the littles. I don't really don't do with all the other stuff. I'm, you know, um, uh, Can you tell us more about that? Because I, I got a couple looks on people's faces. Well, what that mean? So, what does it mean to be a dom? And then tell us what D-type well, is. Well, I mean, that's a, well, it's a, it's a, it's someone that provides many things to a submissive. Um, it could be protection. It could be leadership, love, affection. Um, it could be just someone who provides kink in the bedroom. Uh, it could be um, someone who is provides that dominating presence that maybe you like. Some people like to, some people, I've, I've, I've heard it put in many different ways that some people are in charge every day in their everyday life, or whether it's a job or whatever. So they need someone who they can lay all of that on. 
They need someone who they can completely surrender to, completely submit to. Um, that they don't have to worry about making sometimes any decisions at all. There, there are those that uh, you don't have any control. That can be a, it can be uh, from a submissive. It could go all the way to a slave. You know, we, that's a whole other category. Um, but essentially, um, it's leaning on someone to provide you with care um and you can you can define that many different ways and because this is not that call for that tonight i'll kind of leave it generally like that mm -hmm. um and we can always revisit that on another call you know um and get more deep into into that but essentially i am single uh i go out yes um i was in a relationship I'm no longer in a relationship, um, um, and I'm just enjoying life. Um, my focus right now is to get myself in a place because I'm almost 50, so I can't work that much longer. So my focus is right now, get myself in a position for retirement so I don't have to be worried about things. So if someone comes along, um, that, that energy, the person, you know, talked about energy. Energy is really big for me. Um, and if, if that person has the same energy, um, then we'll make it do what it do, you know, but it's not something right now that I have to have It's something that can add to, you know, I'm healed. I'm not broken. I'm not bitter. And I need someone else exactly the same way. I love it. I love it. So for everyone that's on right here, no one's married, right? Otherwise than me. Is any and no one else is married, right? Okay, so when we say single, does everybody agree that single means not married? Do we agree to that? Agreed. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Okay. Okay. So um Barry, I know that you're in a relationship and Tiffany, you're in a relationship, right? Mm -hmm. And but everybody else is single, single. Well, no, Makisha, you're seeing someone. I'm single, single today. Single, single today. I like it. Single, single today. Freshly single. Okay. okay. Got it. Got it. So because we have a lot of singles on here, not married, um, we're, we're just going to, before, because we, we covered everybody, we've met everybody, everyone knows what to expect going forward, that we have a plethora, and I'm saying plethora because I just like the way it just rolled off my tongue. So plethora <laughs> of relationship styles here um we have women we have men we have heterosexual we have bisexual we have uh you know um lesbian we have poly oh, by the way i'm heterosexual we get that. all this kind of stuff right yes yes fred yes 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 i just said i'm heterosexual so i didn't know i want to make sure i put that out there. oh yes fred is heterosexual <laughs> y'all he is heterosexual big on the hetero He's in the hetero yeah. line. He's in the hetero <laughs> line. So for those of you that are single, 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 what is your top, your top threes? Let's say your top threes. When you're looking to date, your top threes, what are you looking for? Keisha, Makisha, go. Your top threes. Active. Active. Hey, give me, give me, give me more. What does active mean? Active means you are fit. You are in shape. I go to the gym. I am healthy. I ride roller coasters. I rock climb. You have to be an adrenaline racing, like ready to go, jet skiing, motorboats, let's go, race car driving, jump yes. off the top of the mountain, let's get in the water. You got to <laughs> swim. Like, you got, I can't. And let me I tell you something. <laughs> have life tell insurance, you. please. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know how scary and I'm mixed. I'm mixed race, right? My mom is 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 uh, Filipino and Chinese, and my dad is from Trinidad. But it is very hard in my culture for Black men to to be active, fit, in shape, daring, adventurous, not couch potatoes after 45. Okay. It is, it is very, 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 very hard. And that yes. when I say my number one thing 
and not fearful. I am not fearful. I am like this little bottled up white girl on the inside that loves to do all this crazy shit. <laughs> I'm not sure where that came from, but I adore that. I love when a guy can match my energy with that. That's one. Two, um, I'm, I'm making my notes. I, notes. I need him <laughs> to be super duper in tune with compassion and intimacy. And I place those two things together. Right. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. In a very strong way to be in tune with, because when you're compassionate, it's emotionally driving. It's physically mm -hmm. driving. You're a good human. You're respectful. You're probably loyal 99% of the time. Like an intimacy driven meaning you will take your time. You cannot suck my brains out and thumb <laughs> and do all of that 20 year old bullshit like a bunny rabbit. We need to <laughs> need to take your time. I'm not into all of that shit. I gotta, you have to be mindful. You will stare at me. You will fall asleep you will stroke with ease to get to know what I enjoy. I am not in to the bunny rabbit fucking because <laughs> wait to, to get to pound town, right? <laughs> right, right, right. Pound town. No pound town. I no literally pound town. Facebook about that. You know, I love to <laughs> see my daughter right. looks around the corner, what? <laughs> <laughs> pound town, like I'm not, I'm not 20. I, I feel like I'm 20. She ain't 20. And right. who I am as a maturity level right now, I'm much like you said, Tiffany, like if I am not emotionally attached to you, mm -hmm. she ain't even going to act right. Right. Yes. That be like, you move. Ah, mm -hmm. Sahara Desert, here go to see you. She <laughs> try to, you said something wrong and she, if I'm, if I'm mad at you, she's not going to work. Right. Yeah. You know. So it's not even withholding sex, it's it's that it doesn't work. So someone whose intimacy level and compassion level matches. And three, and I'm going to be vain and shallow as fuck because I haven't grown up. I don't care. <laughs> he got to look good. He got to look good. He got to be fine. Aesthetically pleasing to me and aesthetically pleasing to me when you break down the category, it is typically, and I never want to offend anyone because we all have preferences. We all have things that drive us. We have things that make our dicks hard, our pussies wet when we look at people, right? When we lay with people, when we fuck, when we talk, when we have dialogue. Um, fair skin, tall, meaning over 6'1", uh, light eyes. I am a stickler and I absolutely love, I very rarely date someone who doesn't have freckles. Um, and I have, yeah, I'm, I'm really big on those <laughs> ex-husbands okay. that have green eyes, they're light skin, they're mixed, they're tall. I am very, I am very, 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 very particular about the thing. It's not that I won't date a dark skin guy. It's not that I won't. They are um, not my 99% of the time. They don't even come up to me and talk. You're right. Well, uh, can I just say that I think I'm the female version of what you like? <laughs> <laughs> you are the female version of what I would say. I'm compassionate. I'm intimate. I think I'm aesthetically pleasing and I'm light skinned with freckles. So. There you go. Exact <laughs> same type of woman that I would sleep with. It's, it's, <laughs> it doesn't really yes. waver. <laughs> like my true to God, like honest, like yeah. preferences, like those are going to be the first three things that I'm looking for. Period. Yes. Love it. Love it. Okay, Ro. Give, give give us your top three your top three so um number one okay just meeting someone um I have to have some type of stimulating conversation like most people think that I'm this wild party girl like you know that likes to do crazy and wild stuff but my people know that I'm real laid back you know what I'm saying so um the person that I have to vibe with them, I like, can have a great conversation. If you can stimulate my, my brain, the rest of me gonna automatically fall. Um, also, I feel like you have to be funny. Like I need somebody that's gonna make me laugh. And I need somebody that is some spontaneous. Like um, I get bored real quick, so. Like, you know, I'm one of them chicks who be riding down the road and be like, hey, let's pull over. You know what I'm saying? That type shit. So um, 
I got to have spontaneity. You got to be funny because everybody know me. I love to cut up. So, mm-hmm. yeah. So you got to be funny and I don't need no one stuck up. Um, I'm learning too. I'm with um Makisha. Makisha, that's your, how you say your name? So Makisha. I'm learning with you. That dudes, like I didn't try this 45 and up type dating. Oh my God. Like what is wrong with y'all dudes? <laughs> Like for real, it's yeah. like as soon as you get off from work, the first thing you want to do is come home and watch the game or just chill on the couch. Like, bro, y'all want to go dancing, you don't want to <laughs> just go take a walk in the park. Like, for real, Very Very so y'all hear this? Y'all hear this? Y'all, I'm y'all. out. <laughs> I'm out. Like I'm almost an empty nester. I'm I'm outside and they think right. they potatoes. What's wrong with y'all? Right. <laughs> I mean, I'm not I'm not 40, I'm not 45. I'm 41. And a, a, a lot of I think for me, I still I'm I'm still an outside type of guy, but I did a lot of ripping and running when I was in my twenties. Like I ain't gonna do me. <laughs> like I, I did a lot. Okay, I did a lot of ripping and running when I was in my twenties. Like I'm, I'm, I've been, I've been, I've experienced a lot of life at an early age. So like a lot of shit is like played out to me. Like I'm, I'm six foot seven. So I'm I'll, I always appeared to be older than what I was. I always had facial hair. So I got in clubs early. I did a lot of that outing shit when you know I was young. Now I'll still like to. Now I'm into exercise. And so, you know, I'm down with going for walks. And But, it, sweetheart, when the game on, I'm watching the fucking game. So, no, that's not what that's not what we're saying. That's not what we're saying. What, yeah, I'm, I, saying, I what saying. I'm saying what I'm saying is, like, okay, you're 41, <laughs> right? right? So, typically, don't, like, I don't know what the fuck it is, but usually it's dudes between the ages of 32 and 40 that's trying to talk to me. I don't know why, because I'm, you know what I'm saying? I'm an old right. ass lady now. Right. But it's just you like look you look good. Thank you. Boo. <laughs> but it's like you know what I'm saying. Sexually, the older dudes can't keep up with me. You know what I'm saying. It's like, bro, what is you yeah, doing? Yeah, yeah. And I then one of them had the nerve to tell me that he was sleeping with a 27 year old. I said, I'm saying in my head, I wouldn't do his ego like that. But you know what I'm saying. I'm saying to myself, like, bro, you cannot possibly be fucking a 27 year old if you can't ho- handle 46. You definitely ain't handling 27. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> Like you may, but you may want to come home and sit on the couch, and you know that's cool because we're like that. But to use the excuse that you did this, this, that, and when you was younger, hell, we did too. But at the same time, right. we have it's called balance. Like you know what I'm saying? You have to know, like your girl ain't gonna want to sit at home all the time. I can respect the game because you know I like football, so hey, I'm good with that. But at the same time, like if I want to go dancing oh. tonight, put on some clothes, and go on a fucking date, I want to hear. I'm tired. I just got to work 12 hours. Motherfucker, I just worked too. Like, I just got off the job yeah, too, but, but I yeah, still want to go but, out. But, we gotta, but you got to understand the workload of most men, man. We we got to go out here and provide, fight the world, carry the world, deal with problems, all that we shit. I'm not, saying, I'm not saying, I'm not saying, hold on, let me finish, let me finish. I'm not saying that female, I'm not saying that women don't have the same challenges. I, what I'm just saying is, if we don't go do it with the fuck we supposed to do for our household, then we have to bear the burden of taking accountability for what the household don't have. So a lot of times men, we, some men don't know how to balance their workload from their personal, you know what I'm saying? Life. And so all they know is to get up and go out there and chase that money. So, you know, like I, I, I do. I, I'm, I'm a plumber in the HVAC. So a lot of times, man, I'm, you know, I'm breaking my back every day. I come home and I understand I still have to give my, my significant other that attention. She wants to be coddled. She wants to be told that you sexy, you beautiful. I just think that it, you, you, these are the, in these stages, you need to find out if this man can have that balance before you just, because once you know, he don't know how to, then it's your fault if you stay there, you know what I'm saying? Oh, okay. Obviously he just ain't for you. But I'm most men work-life balance. That's added. I'm adding yeah. that to attributes. Work life balance. I got you. I got you. I got you. I got you. Um, who else is single? Uh uh, Fred, your top three. Uh well, well, let me let me respond first before I give my top three to what okay. they said. Okay. Um we we all have preferences and we all want what we want but 
we, we also have to realize is that we all are shaped by our experiences, our environment, our, our the people that we deal with on an everyday basis, who we've dated before, blah, blah, blah. And sometimes because of our experiences that we've had, negative or bad, sometimes mm -hmm. dictate what we do now and what we don't do. And it's not that it's sometimes a age thing um, that some men don't do this or that now, uh, or even be, that they can't physically. Um, it's because sometimes they've just had bad experiences with some of those things before and going out to clubs, like you look at, like me, I'm not a club person. Um, the, when I, the things that I see and, and hear and experience from other people, you know, is getting shot up all the time. There's issues all the time at the clubs and things of that nature. You know, so personally, I stay out of the club, you know? I stay out of the club. I don't really hardly go to concerts anymore, stuff like that, because it's almost one of those things where it's always something happening. So sometimes it's not that the person is too old. It's sometimes they just want don't want to put their significant other or their female in a situation that they don't have control over. And so when you look at it from that perspective, you know, I tell the female, appreciate that man for not putting you in a situation where he thinks he might not be able to protect you. If he and takes I you to a club because you are because you are saying, hey, I want to go see this Ja Rule and 50 Cent, little baby concert, and you've been wanting to go to this concert, you go, you get hurt, then what? Or, and I know they could be just be the opposite, but we, we don't think about what could be until it does. And so as a man, we are protected, right? Yeah. That's our job is to protect yeah. our significant others. And so if we think that there's not going to be a situation where we can protect you nine times out of ten, we're just not going to do it. Okay. That's, that's, that's a just, good point. That's just, yeah, that's, that's just what it is. And, 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 and it's because we're, try, we're not trying to be uh, just tell you no, but Sometimes we can see things that you can't, and we can see how things are going to fold that you can't, because we're looking through a different set of eyes than what you're looking for, or you, that you're looking through. So now get back to my um, top three. Uh -uh, uh -uh, Number uh -uh. one, uh -uh, go ahead. Uh -uh. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> no. I'm not letting you go away from that one. So I'm sorry. Go ahead. The ladies want active, okay? We understand you're not yeah, going to take us, you're not gonna take us nowhere. You're not going to take us nowhere that, that we're going to be unsafe. However, yeah. mm -hmm. are you, I'm going to just guys this now, active. Are you, because yeah. how old are you, Fred? You said? Yeah, very, yeah. Going to the gym. How old are you again? 40, I'm 49. 49. So for, for you, what is active? So if you're dating a woman, what is what do you like to do with a woman that you're dating? Um, and you're I in the like 40 and over club. I like that we to go. That's not active. Yeah, I, so I, you I, know what I, you I do. <laughs> well, I'm not comparing what they. I'm just saying what I do. Yeah, I love to go. I love to go walking, and I'm my goal is to run a uh, um a 5K uh, without stopping within the next year. Um, my goal. My I love to you know play flag football. I love softball. Um, basketball. I played basketball and football. My my basically my my whole high school and in the high school. Excuse me. I played college intramural. Oh, yeah. I played on the college team, but played on the intramural team. Um, and now, you know, it's about maintaining. I don't need to um, lift seven hundred pounds on my shoulders anymore like I used to. I don't need to run a forty yard dash in you know, five seconds anymore like I used to. You know, I, I just need to make sure that if my babe is in trouble, we in trouble, can I save her? Can I save myself? Can I save my family? Can we go out and have fun? If she want to race, I'm just fast. <laughs> you know? So, 
you know, I like to be active. I, I love to be active, but people underestimate me all the time and say, oh, he's big. I'm 6'3", you know, 298 pounds and think I can't move or can't run. I'm like, let's go. We can race anytime and, and I bet I win. So, you know, it's- It's, it's on, it's, Fred. It's on. Oh, yeah, let's go. Hey, I got let's you. go. We just we want to make sure anytime. that you're not sitting on the couch and not doing nothing when you got a lady. We want to make sure you out doing stuff because- yeah. We like to get out. We like to get out. And okay. I usually got to go to the club either because, like, I'm not a club person. I hate clubs. Only time I like being in the club is when I'm performing and I don't even like being in the bed. Tiffany, you tell mm-hmm. you. As soon as I perform, I'm out the door. Like, you, yeah. you'd be like, damn, where Rogo? Outside. Like, I hate being in clubs. So yeah. I don't do clubs either, but I'm grown. And as a grown woman, I want to get dressed up and get sexy and cute, you know, Every now and again, go out to dinner, dance a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Listen to some live jazz. You know, <laughs> grown folk shit. Yeah, you know I'm saying. Well, I, you know what I'm saying? I don't. I don't know. I'm personally. I don't know of any man that I hang around with that it doesn't fit that mold. I don't know what guys you dating or what guys you see. But all the guys <laughs> that I know nobody that I hang around nobody. with, they they fit that mold. That they go out and we we entertain. Mm-hmm. We we go out to you know events and 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 we we, we do stuff. So I well, I need what, you to send some, some of them my way. Send some of them to Charlotte. So send yeah, send them some of them my way. way. They go for anybody else on the panel. If you got single friends, male or female, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. I am open to dating. Okay, just put it out there. Just put it out there. Well, All tip right, number eight. So for years, I promoted. So I do do nightlife. I am yeah. nightlife person. Um. I mean, being stampled in, in a club or being shot is the same thing as getting in your car and getting in a car accident. It, it, you, it's, you're more probable of getting in a car accident than getting shot in a club, actually. But for yeah. me, my man... Protected- yeah, but the, tra- but the trauma from those different situations is totally different. It is, but either we don't know that, though, because have you ever had your, your leg cracked in half and your ankle cracked in 20 different places like mine and rebuilt and being stuck in a bed for six months? Because I have. Like, cause that's traumatizing. And mm-hmm. I was accident. So, I, and I grew up in the projects and Marcy projects in Brooklyn. And I know what it's like to watch somebody get shot. So it is traumatizing in both cases, but I'm mm-hmm. not going, I'm not going to knock somebody that doesn't go to clubs anymore. Cause the 40 and over thing, I get it. It is played out. I did it for a long time because I've been promoting since I was 20 years old. So mm-hmm. it is a job for me. It's a position. It's a role. It's something I enjoy. And I make a hell of a lot of money doing it. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, it's going to be a lifestyle for me. Um, and it's not for the week. Someone that dates me has to understand I'm a social media person. Someone mm-hmm. has to understand that I'm a nightlife person. Someone mm-hmm. has to understand that I deal with celebrities and athletes and I'm in their face and I'm talking and I do a lot of that naturally. Yeah. It mm-hmm. is not for the week. And so not. we you know, know that. Well. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It is not yeah. like a situation where any, just yeah. any kind of guy can date me because yeah, I'm. A lot of people have a lot of access to me, right? And yeah. that's not a very comfortable position for someone yeah. who may not be completely secure either. Right. Um, I don't think it has anything about being secure. If it's just not that I want to be in that mode, or that's not a, a a place where I am in my life. A lot of people mistake being insecure to just I just don't want to do it no more. You know, that's not insecure. Yeah. Yeah, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Not, but, but I'm saying, not saying you, but I'm saying a lot of people mistake that for saying, oh, he just he's just not comfortable with me and talking to this person or what. No, no. You no, talk to whoever you want to talk to. The stage that don't like to go out, it doesn't work for me. I, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I, I'd yeah. like to part with my man. Right. Yeah. I, I want to go out and dance with my dude. I want him to enjoy the things that I enjoy. I enjoy games and sports. I have a sports podcast with with NBA stars, with AI and Anthony Morrow and stuff. So I I enjoy stuff like that. So I don't mind going out with my dude to watch that. I am a cigar connoisseur. Mm -hmm. I go out to cigar bars so I can chill and listen to live music and wind down. Mm -hmm. You know, I do both. But someone has to be very versatile for me. That's I'm just saying for me. There's nothing wrong with guy that is chilled and laid back he just ain't for me right yeah, right. 
let's bring it back in y'all because we we were over we were over because we're late we were we started late i started late but we're over so fred your top three and then aj i'm gonna get your top three and then we're gonna tell everybody about what we got going on july 29th and we're gonna get off here because i know y'all got lives <laughs> fred so, give me your so, top three so top top first thing is you need to be aware of your own needs Under, mm -hmm. understand uh who you are what you are and whom you are um if you don't have that together there's no way that i can come in and be what you need because you don't even know what you need mm. so you're going to be confused and i'm not ever going to be enough so that's the first thing know that you are whole you're not shattered you're not broken you are you should be enough for yourself alone. I should not be the person you're waiting on to complete you. You are already complete. Your leg is not over there. Your other leg is not over here. Your, le your arm is not here and your arm is not there. You are complete already. And if you don't feel that way, that means you need to spend some time healing. Yep. Figure Love out it. why you're fractured why you're broken, fix it. The problem today is we don't want to spend the time alone to fix it. We always have to have somebody next to us so we can bleed on the next person because of what we didn't fix in prior. And, and that's something I'm not willing to carry nobody else's baggage anymore. I've done that. I'm not willing to do that anymore. So that's the first thing. Second thing is you need to be emotionally available. If you're not emotionally available, then how can we communicate when I need to share something with you? Or if you need to share something yourself, you're going to hold off. You're going to be quiet about it. You're not going to speak up. You're not going to say it. And when I don't recognize what's wrong, then it's my fault. Because I should have read your mind, right? <laughs> how many times do you hear people say you should have known? Mm. You you should know me by now. Mm. You you know that's what I like. No, you didn't open your mouth. We are adults. Open mm. your mouth. Be emotionally available for me to be able to connect with you in a way that you understand and trust that whatever you say to me, I'm going to protect it. I'm going to, you know engage you and I'm going to do whatever I can to help you through whatever it is that you try to you know communicate to me so being emotionally available is very very key and then the last not least thing is it's part about being active kind of but you can't be lazy in the bedroom Mm. You, you can't be lazy because I'm not lazy and so the, the days are over when you think men are supposed to do all the work no ma'am who said that? a lot of people say that a lot of women I've heard say that what does so, being lazy in the bedroom are, look like? what does that mean? in there? well what, what lazy in the bedroom is you know, when you ask it on top, man, I got to give you many excuses, so many excuses on why they don't like it. Oh, I'm tired. Oh, two minutes. And and and, and then they want to, you know, say, oh, get back on top. What? <laughs> okay, so you want so, her to put in put in equal amount of work. The thing is, if, or, if, if you're minute. not willing to engage and put in the work what does that what does that say for me either a you're not enjoying it b you are not in tune with what you like or what you need sexually or c you just don't give a damn so you might know, not have, they might not have the confidence well with yeah. that too but, the, again, not, but that's a problem not, if that is the case that's a problem for me or so, maybe they don't know what you like and you haven't. Well, but, that's, but that goes back to <laughs> my first point is 
know what your needs are. If you don't know what you need, mm -hmm. how and you and you're not emotionally available to tell me, yeah. how can we progress? How can we move forward? How can we build a foundation? How can we bond? We can't do any of that if you don't know what you need, you're not emotionally available because that all leads to deeper love, deeper trust, deeper compassion, empathy. Those things go all together. Mm -hmm. and, if, and if we're not communicating, none of that can exist. And if you don't know who you are and, and have a solid foundation on yourself, you definitely can't offer me anything because if you're depleted already, what, what do you have to offer me? I got it. So I got it. That was my top three. Got it. AJ, top three. Yeah, what Fred said. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to say after that. Yeah. Your own words. Uh, yeah, sure. I could. Yeah, I could sum it up. Um, so basically, I would say uh, number one, definitely self love. Like, there's nothing sexier than a woman who knows herself, who loves herself, and who moves through life with that confidence, right? Who exudes that confidence. Um, so that's definitely number one. Um, <clears throat> number two would be uh, self awareness. You know. Uh, you know, you have to be able to look inward, you know, if you're going to tell me, you know, what I need to fix, you need to know what you need to fix, right? Or what you need to work through, right? Just like to Fred's point, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? You can't expect me to know, you know, what's going on with you or to heal what's going on with you. You have to be accountable for that yourself, right? Um, and then lastly, I would say communication. I think communication is the foundation to any relationship, you know, because if I don't know, we can't fix it, right? Um, you know, we have to be able to talk through things. And a lot of things could be resolved just have a conversation, you know? Um, instead of harboring it, then it, animosity, you know, builds and grows. And then it becomes something bigger than it ever should have been had you just had that conversation and made created the space to make someone feel safe enough, right? Because it, it works both ways, right? For that person to have a conversation with you and for you to be able to move forward in that space, so... Those are my top three things. Yes, yes. Those are all beautiful, beautiful things. So I just want to go ahead and tell everybody, thank y'all for being on tonight. The big announcement is, is that y'all see these sexy faces on here right now. So we got Miss Makisha, Miss Tiffany, Miss AJ, Miss Roe, Mr. Fred, um, Classic Webster, Barry. I'm going to have to get my paddle somewhere because we, we going to get him up there on July 29th. I don't care what Barry said. So, <laughs> so July 29th, we are having an in-person live PR relationships and sex talk right in Charlotte. So we are going to be live, y'all. So for all of y'all that are listening and for all of y'all that commenting and hardening and liking and sharing and all that good stuff, y'all come on out. Saturday, July 29th. It's a private location. So you have to reach out to one of us. Okay, it's a private location. It's invite only. You have to be invited because you if you go look for it somewhere, you might find it, the information, but you're not going to find the location. So you have to be invited. Okay, so I'm inviting you. Makisha, AJ, Ro, Tiffany, Fred, Classic, all of us, we're inviting y'all to come out and we're going to do a live relationships and sex talk. It's going to be a sexy night. So make sure that y'all go in y'all's closet or go on Amazon or go to Sheen, <laughs> whatever it is that y'all do, find something sexy to wear. <laughs> um, <clears throat> those people out there, if y'all in a relationship, um, we're going to have y'all wear red. If you're not in a relationship, we're going to come up with another color for y'all so everybody can know who, what everything is in there and it's going to just be sexy, okay? So come on out, July 29th, Charlotte location, private live PR, the relationships and sex talk, all of the people that you just saw on here, including Barry, including Barry, is going to be there <laughs> July 29th. It's a Saturday right here in Charlotte, private location. If you want to come out, if you want to have a good time, it's going to be a live taping. There's going to be a photographer there. There's going to be music there. There's going to be drinks there. There's going to be food there. It's going to be a party, y'all. Okay. And we're going to talk. We're going to talk about relationships. We're going to talk about sex. We're going to talk about sex some more. And we're going to talk about more sex. And then we're going to talk about relationships. And then we're going to talk about sex again. Okay. So that's what we're going to do. So the private, 
relationships oh. and sex talk, July 29th, private location. Reach out to anybody on here right now so that y'all can get an invitation. Come on out, party with us, have a good time. Here we are. All right. We went over, way over, but it doesn't look like nobody minded because we still getting hearts and likes and shares and all that good stuff. So I will see everybody on July 29th. We'll see y'all on July 29th and make sure that y'all tune in. Um, we are going to get together one more time before July 29th. It's going to be to for us to tell y'all what's going on, to let y'all know that we are ready to go. We're going to get all dressed up and sexy and go live for y'all to let y'all know that it's going down. So all we're going to be missing is y'all. So whatever y'all doing right now, just give it up. Go to July 29th, cancel whatever you have planned because you're going to come out with us. Okay. I mean, that's, 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 that's just what it is. That's, that on that. <laughs> that's, that's what it is. <laughs> good All night, right. everybody. All right. Good night. Have good a night. night. Take care. Good night. Bye. Bye. Good night, everybody.